uh, today being Jayananda's disappearance day, we're going to depart from the uh, usual program, um, and I'm going to speak about him. But first, to, to, uh, well, I'm going to read this current verse from um, <coughs> Chaitanya Chaitamrita. Uh, King Patrapurda of Orissa, uh, now called Odisha, the Oriya devotees, uh, Krishnananda and Shivananda, Paramananda, Mahaprabhu, Bhagavan Acharya, Brahmananda Bharati, and Shiki Mahiti and Murari Mahiti, constantly associated with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Well, uh, he resided, while well, he resided, Lord Chaitanya, resided in Jagannath Puri. So today I'm gonna to speak about Jayananda. I'm gonna be reading some things from notes and uh, this exposition isn't necessarily gonna be chronological or in sequence, in, in historical order, as there are a lot of things in the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, they're not necessarily in chronological order. One of the first things I want to say is that in, uh, some of you who have read Nectar of Devotion may know that Prabhupada mentions Jayananda in Nectar of Devotion. He writes, I beg to acknowledge with thanks, the contribution made by my beloved, beloved disciple, Sriman Jayananda Brahmachari. And when Jayananda uh, departed this world, he, uh, afterwards, he received a letter from Srila Prabhupada and part of it went like this. As you are hearing Hare Krishna Kirtan, I am sure that you were directly promoted to Krishna Loka. That's a letter from Prabhupada in, uh, in, uh, written in Bombay on the 5th of May, 1977. And as far as I know, he is the only person that uh, received a written notification from Prabhupada during Prabhupada's manifest uh, pastimes on this earth that uh, he attained Krishna Loka. So it's quite a, 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 a special feature. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the Ratha Yatras and uh, one thing about Jayananda is he was known by some people as the king of Rathayatra or the Rathayatra king. Before the Rathayatras uh, uh, really got underway big time in, in uh, San Francisco, that's where it started, um, the devotees used to have a, a meeting with uh, the police chief, Chief Cahill was his name, and a few other people that were in, in charge of the, uh, the whole scene in San Francisco before they had the Rathayatra. And uh, Jayananda had, had departed this world shortly before the meeting. And uh, one, of the, one of the ladies who was present at the meeting, uh, when, when she heard the news, she was very uh, stricken and she couldn't talk and uh, she started weeping. And then she had to leave the room and uh, probably she uh, had a good cry and then she came back. After she regained her composure, she did come back and, and the, the meeting went on and the Rathiatra took place. Uh, another uh, instance that, I, that uh, I've been told, I wasn't there, but there was a construction of Rathayatra carts in, a, in a, um, uh, the parking lot of a, of a kind of store like uh, a supermarket really. It was called Safeway. It's kind of like Kohl's. And uh, Jayananda had been up all night working on, and it was very greasy, working on the, on the Rathayatra cart, getting it exactly right. He'd been an industrial engineer. Uh, he was born in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and, and when, and I'm gonna go back to this. Uh, and so Prabhupada was having a darshan right in San Francisco and the devotees invited Jayananda to come to it. And he was so tired from being up all night that he said, oh, I, I just don't wanna go. I'm full of grease and you know, I'm very tired and it wouldn't be appropriate. But somehow or other, he was convinced to go. And he, the, they were all sitting in a, in a single room and uh, Prabhupada was speaking. And a few times Jayananda started to uh, nod out because he'd been up all night and he just couldn't sit in a warm room still without going to sleep. And it happened about three times and he just lost consciousness and started to, to uh, fold. And, and uh, unbeknownst to uh, the devotees there, Prabhupada was watching all this very carefully. And uh, each time that the Jayananda started to nod out, the devotee next to him would nudge him with his elbow or saying that, 
in his ear, kind of whispering, oh, you can't, uh, you can't go to sleep while Prabhupada's giving darshan. And then after about three or four times, Prabhupada saw this and he said to the, all the devotees present, he said, leave him alone. He said to the devotee who was nudging him, leave him alone. He is doing more work than all of you put together. <laughs> so that really happened. Um, and then another interesting thing that happened after the uh, Rathiatras took place in Los Angeles was that the uh, uh, person who, uh, they, they have uh, reunions sort of uh, uh, in, in every 10 years or so after the high schools uh, uh, sessions end. And, uh, and he was a student at Oakwood High School in, in Dayton, Ohio. And this, this man uh, named Andrew Hallam who was the, the uh, point man, he would write a letter and he would organize all these reunions. He just, just happened to be in Durban, South Africa, Chatsworth, near, near uh, uh, um, Johannesburg. And he, he saw this picture of Jayananda in the Rothkart and he thought to himself, I, I think I know this guy, but I, he, he didn't know who he was because he uh, didn't recognize him because he had a shaved head and, and he was wearing devotee clothes. But he, he, he was positive that he knew him from somewhere. So he asked a lot of people that were in the Rathiatra uh, in Durban, and uh, nobody seemed to really know what his, his other name, legal name was, because he was just Jayananda, as far as everyone knew. But finally, after quizzing maybe half a dozen people, he finally found out someone who knew his name. He knew his name was James or Jim Corr. So the, the, armed with this knowledge, Andrew Hellam, uh, made a, a long distance telephone call all the way from South Africa to uh, probably New York. And uh, he knew that uh, James Corr's father worked for a company called Sherwin Williams Paint. And Sherwin Williams Paint at that time was a very big paint company. In fact, uh, they had a neon sign that I saw a few times. And it just shows you what, what, what people used to do with modern technology. This neon sign had a picture uh, in neon of, of a Sherwin-Williams paint can, and it was pouring paint on a globe or a, 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 um, a, 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 a of the world, a globe of the world. And you could see all the different continents in it. And, and when it was pouring this uh, paint in the form of, of red neon onto the globe, it, it looked like it was covering the whole globe. And after a while, the whole globe just turned red, was the color of the paint. And the slogan was, we cover the world. So that was a very, a very prominent uh, location in, in, in Portland, Oregon. And, and that was the Sherwin Williams Paint Company. And that's why this man remembered that James Corr Sr. worked for Sherwin Williams Paint. And little by little, he was able to trace this man, James Corr Sr., to Grand Junction, Colorado, where they had moved. And, and, uh, and somehow, the, he was very enthusiastic, and he, he told uh, James Corr Sr. He said, you know that your son is very highly regarded in the Hare Krishna movement. They even have his picture on one of their uh, chariots. So he made this long distance telephone call all the way from Durban, South Africa to Grand Junction, Colorado in another country just to tell James Corr Sr. that his son was, was a very prominent person in the Hare Krishna movement. He said, you probably wouldn't recognize him now, but anyway, that was part of the, the, uh, of the letter he wrote to all the, the uh, the graduates of Oakwood High School that year. And I, I spoke to this man to verify it. And at that time, he lived in a place called San Fernando, California, which is near Los Angeles. And, and he verified that, yes, it's actually true. He, he saw this picture, and he recognized the person, and he made this long distance telephone call to James Corr. I don't know if the, Andrew Hallam is still alive. Uh, anyway, the Ratha Yatra in LA was, was, was Jayananda's idea, because it's one of the biggest cities, probably the second biggest city in the United States. It's Los Angeles. It means uh, Los Angeles, uh, the angels. That's what it means in Spanish, Los Angeles. But uh, what happened was he convinced Rameshwar, who was then the uh, sort of leader of the, of, of, of the BBT and the temple president, that we should have a Ratha Yatra in this city. So we got into a car, along with Karandar, who was the temple president at that time. Rameshwar was also the temple president, the GBC, and the BBT man. And so we all got in this car with Jayananda, three of us, four of us, with, uh, with Jayananda. And there was uh, Rameshwar and Karanda and myself. And we started looking around the city for where we would have the Rathiyatra, because we thought it was a really good idea. And we drove all over. We went to the central business district, 
We went to the Wilshire area, and everywhere we looked, we couldn't see any people. It was a weekday, and probably most of the people were in their offices or in their cars, but there were just no people around. So as a last resort, we thought, well, we'll just go to Venice Beach and call it a day. And so we went to Venice Beach. Venice Beach is, is sort of part of Los Angeles, really, but it's right on the beach. It's right on the Pacific Ocean. And all of a sudden, we saw thousands of people. A lot of them were tourists from, from uh, different parts of America, from different parts of the world, and uh, sort of really bizarre things were going on. We saw a guy on a skateboard that was being pulled by a German Shepherd dog, and he was skating down the, the uh, concrete walkway, oceanfront walk, it was called. And, as, and then we thought, well, this, this is probably the better, a good place to have the Rath Theater. It's right on the beach, and, and uh, it, it's just kind of a good atmosphere. There's a lot of people here. And just as we were uh, approaching the end of the walk, there was a, a policeman, and he was standing there, kind of with his arms, I think they call it akimbo, and we thought, uh-oh, he's going to arrest us for having this wheelchair. We were, we were pushing Jayanana in a wheelchair, and we thought, uh-oh, he's going to arrest us because we're not supposed to have a, a wheelchair on Oceanfront Walk. And he was blocking our way. And, 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 and we got really close to him. And, and, and all of a sudden, he just put his right hand out to Jayananda and said, I want to shake your hand. My name is Sergeant White. That's his real name, Sergeant White. He said, maybe you don't know about this, but in downtown Los Angeles last night, there was a gunfight. And one of your men saved the life of my partner. And to this day, we still don't know what happened, but he was overwhelmed by the fact that, that Hare Krishna had saved his partner's life. And, and he said, so whatever you do, I'm gonna, I'm, uh, I mean, you know, I'm gonna support. So that was our, uh, and then that was a signal to all of us that, that we had to have the Rathiatra there because here was a policeman who we thought was gonna arrest us and was so happy. Uh, we thought, well, this is, a sim this is a sign from God. Somehow we have to have the Rathiatra at this location. And it was that very busy location, actually. Uh, so then, then, then uh, it was difficult to get an okay for this by the temple, even though we thought that th this is the place where it should be, Rameshwar and, and Karandar were a little bit uh, diffident about the whole thing. We, we, you know, having a, a Rath Theatre is a pretty major event. How would it be done? And so they, they just said, well, we'll th have to think about it. We're, we don't, we're not saying yes or no at this point. Uh, we just have to think about it. And while they were thinking about it, um, Jayananda moved into the temple complex. He was across the road, uh, across Venice Beach Road, Venice Road, Venice Boulevard, and uh, somehow or other he had he'd been brought back to the temple community and they, they got him a uh, hospital bed so he could sit up and control the bed from, from his apartment. And no one else was allowed into that apartment. I mean, when he was there, some people were allowed to go in and visit him, but it was his place. And then one day, sort of by magic, a, a big pile of lumber appeared in the parking lot of, of, uh, of Watsika Avenue, which is where the temple is, and Watsika Avenue. And it was lumber that, uh, that cost about $5,000 that Jayananda had, had purchased and, and had brought to this location. And there was a big stack of lumber, like the lumber on this, that was out here in this parking lot, big stack of wood. They were big, long pieces of wood. And uh, when Rameshwar learned that, the, that even though he hadn't, he hadn't approved that this should, have, should take place, he was kind of overwhelmed by the, the, the determination of Jayananda that this Rathakart would have to be built in Los Angeles. And he, and, and he consented to it. And then it became a, a fait accompli that that had to be done uh, at that place. So what happened later is that uh, in May, just before the, the disappearance of, of Jayananda, he was, uh, he was very uh, stricken. He had a terminal disease, actually. He had uh, leukemia, which is a form of terminal cancer. And, and he was degenerating, degenerating, and degenerating. And there was one devotee named V. Harini who used to cook for him. And one day she made a big tub. We call them tubs. Those days they were about that deep, about uh, 10 centimeters deep and about that, you know, half a, a meter wide. And, uh, and so she made him a tub full of, of uh, cauliflower pakoras. And to our amazement, even though he was in a stricken condition, he ate the entire thing, <laughs> 50 uh, cauliflower pakoras. And, and then uh, he said to us a few days later, I, I was organizing the, this Rathayatra with a devotee named Bububrahan, who was a, a New Yorker, and he sounded like very New York. He had a, I don't know, I can't imitate his accent, but he was a New Yorker through and through. 
and I didn't have much to do with him, but somehow or other we got people to uh, be enthused about this Roth Theatre, and we made a big chart, kind of a graph, that had on, on one axis the names of all the people in the community, there were about 70 people in there, and, uh, and on the other uh, axis was, were the dates, the days of the week and the dates. So everybody was engaged by that graph. They, they had to do something. They had to either cook or they had to make banners or, or make leaflets or, or do something. So there was a buzz in this community of 70 people. Uh, I, it lasted for about a month. And because uh, the Rathia had been decided that there would be a Rathiatra in Los Angeles and, and, and that would take place in that city. And little by little, the, uh, the pieces of lumber started to manifest as Rathiatra carts. And they were very magnificent carts. It was the first time, I think, that they were carts of that size and, and that faithful to the Rathiatra carts in, uh, in Orisha, Odisha, Puri. Uh, and they were constructed by a guy named Lalitanath. Lalitanath was a, sort of a very burly uh, man. He was a construction engineer and he really knew how to, and he actually got the wheel, he, he manufactured the wheels from scratch. The spokes were uh, big pieces of, of, of iron, of metal, and then he, and then he used the, the rims as big other pieces of metal and he bent them so that they, they formed circles. And then he, he, uh, he, he sent the wheels to another state, state of Arizona, I think it was Arizona, and he had the, the, uh, the rims um, welded to the spokes, and the spokes on the other end were welded to the, uh, 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 the center, and, uh, and he had the, the, uh, the rubber on the outside of, the, uh, uh, of the, the round rims vulcanized onto them, so that they were just not stuck on there or nailed on, they were actually vulcanized, they were melted in, in, a, in, a, in a very state-of-the-art way, so that these, when these wheels came back, they were very solid, and, and uh, they were, they were uh, four for each car, 12 wheels. Uh, all of a sudden, these 12 wheels appeared, and they were, they were all vulcanized, and, and, and he was an expert. And then, and then as Jayananda was deteriorating, we thought, well, it's his birthday, so we, we should get him to, to at least come out, and Viharini had made these cakes. Each cake was fashioned to look like a Rathiatra car. They had the same colors. Uh, of, you know, they, they had icing sugar of different colors, and the wheels were donuts. And, but when we talked to Jayananda about going out there, we didn't tell him it was for his birthday or it was the birthday party, we just said, come out and have a look at these carts, they're really magnificent, have a look at them. And he said, no, I don't want to go, I don't feel like going. And so then we had to think of a, of a way to get him out there, think of a, of a sort of ruse. And the, the guy who was building the carts thought of it, and he said that I, I think I'll get him out here by telling him that I, I, I run into an engineering problem, because they were both engineers. Jayananda was an industrial engineer, and, and, uh, and uh, Lalitanath was a construction engineer. He said, but I, 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 we've run into a, he came into uh, Jayananda's room and he said, well, we have to, you have to see what's going on, because it's a, it's a construction problem, and we don't know how to solve this problem unless you come and see what, what's going on there. So very reluctantly, Jayananda got out of his hospital bed and into his wheelchair, and we pushed him out to the cart, which was about 200 meters away, the parking lot. And when he got outside of the, the, uh, of the complex in which he lived, he heard people chanting Hare Krishna, and then, and then he realized that they, it was a birthday party. But it was too late because we were on the way. And, uh, and so I have pictures of this, too. When we got there to the parking lot with these uh, three-quarters built the Rathiatra carts, he insisted on speaking. And we thought, well, don't speak, because this is your party. And, uh, but he insisted on standing up out of his wheelchair and speaking, and his voice was so warbly and so weak that he could barely talk. He just went on and on about how great the Rathiatra is and how uh, it's wonderful it's taking place in this city, and on and on. And he talked for about 10 minutes, and people were ready to catch him in case he were to collapse. And then it was time to uh, eat the cake, and he was given a knife to, to make the first cut and, and have the first piece of cake. And uh, he did that, but instead of eating the cake, he gave it to the children. That were, there, were, there were many children. There were about 50 devotees in the parking lot and about 20 children or 25 children. So he gave it to them to eat, and, and they very lovingly uh, devoured the, the first pieces of cake, donuts and all. And then, and then after, the, after the event, uh, we, we pushed Jayananda back to his room. Uh, 
And in, in order to make this a very splendid event, it, it's, uh, it goes down this walkway called Ocean, Ocean Front Walk to a four acre uh, lawn area, which is right on, is right on, on the beach. It's, it's, uh, it's called Venice Beach. And uh, we thought to make this really spectacular, we have to have some, uh, some live elephants because, you know, that's just, I don't know where we got this idea, but we went to a place called Riverside, California, east of Los Angeles, not very far. It's a place where they train wild animals for acting in movies. And they have lions and cheetahs and, and leopards and all kinds of wild beasts that they, they, they clip their nails. Somehow they train them to die, jump out on people out of trees and not hurt them. So we, we made arrangements to, uh, to get three elephants from them. They, they were trained elephants, but they said the only thing is that their trainers have to go with them. They can't come alone. And so we had to take their trainers with them. They were, they were big elephants. They weren't just like little uh, Indian elephants. They were African elephants. They're the large size elephants. And so we made arrangements. It cost us quite a bit of money, but I thought, well, it's gonna make the, all the big difference. And uh, we raised money from sometimes questionable means, but there were uh, uh, a bona fide marathon going on. And uh, uh, there were devotees in Los Angeles that went to uh, great odds, great extremes to uh, to raise the, the necessary funds. It cost us, a whole, the whole event cost about $70,000, which in those days was a lot of money. It sounds like not so much money now, but it was really huge in those days. And, and one, one of the things we had to do was, um, was, was get the, what, what they call shamayanas, or, or uh, these, these uh, Indian-made blanket things to, to, uh, to, to, for decorations. And they had to be shipped. They had to be shipped from India to Los Angeles on, in time for the Rathiatra. And it was very difficult to, to get them on time. There was a, a, a shipping line called American Steamship Lines, it was called. And uh, I, I may have got the name wrong, but American something lines. And uh, in order to, to it was, had to be, they had to be made in, in New Delhi and then brought to Bombay, and then, and then put on the ships, and then brought to Los Angeles in time for the Rathiatra. And it just so happened that they got there one day, they arrived in Los Angeles one day before the Rathiatra. And, and uh, when we talked to the customs agents, they said, well, we can't, I'm sorry, we can't do anything for you because it's, it's a weekend day and everything is shut. And somehow or other, we convinced them to, to let us clear the, these goods in, in, in one day or just in a few hours, even though no one was working there. And, and they arranged for these huge tents to come. They called them shamayanas. And they were made into tents. And the whole thing was, it took several days to set up this. It was like a major event. There was tents, there were stages. And then one of the things we did was we, we created signs, signposts. You know, they, they're uh, pieces of wood. They're about maybe half a meter long. and, and uh, about 10 centimeters wide, and each one pointed in the direction of an event. It, it said changing bodies, one said changing bodies, one said main stage, and there were about 10 or 15 of these things, and we put them on a post so that people would, wouldn't get lost, where they would know where to go, a free feast, whatever was happening. So we, we had these big banners made, and we went to the, the uh, city, to, uh, we went to about 30 different departments in the city to, to make this happen. We had to get permission. And uh, one of the, the, the uh, departments had to do with traffic. And uh, they were the, the department that gave uh, permission for the banners. And, and uh, we learned later that what we did was actually illegal because we were the first people that, that had these huge banners. They were about five or six meters long and maybe half, uh, uh, one meter w uh, tall. And we, we, we made about 30 of them and put them up on, on, on intersections uh, between lampposts all over the city and, and north of the city. And uh, one of them was on uh, Wilshire Boulevard, which is a big, wide uh, venue, a big street, and uh, it's got two lanes going in each direction. And after a while, the banner, which, the, which we made ourselves, the banner said, Festival of the Chariots, free feast for 10,000 people. That was, and they were handmade. They were made out of some kind of, of uh, uh, polyester or uh, some kind of, of, of fabric that was uh, Im almost impossible to, to, to tear. Anyway, we hung them up. We, we rented a, uh, a, a cherry picker. I think you know what a cherry picker is. It's one of those things that's got an arm that goes way high. And at night, because we kind of knew that it was illegal, we, we did it at night. We put them up all over the city. 
And uh, one of them was at Wilshire Boulevard, which was completely illegal to, to put a, a banner up in that street. And uh, after a while, it began to sag down. The banner, be it was hang hung, strung really uh, solidly, and then it started to hang down. And, and it, hang it hung down so low that one truck that was passing by caught the banner on its whatever, truck, and it, it started to pull it off, off its moorings. And, it, and there were two lampposts that almost snapped in two. And this was all witnessed by the guy in the parking lot, who right opposite, who, who saw the whole thing. And he rushed out and thought, oh, well, nobody died, nobody was injured, and these, these uh, stanchions just sprung back up once the, the, uh, the banner broke. And he ran out, this uh, parking lot man ran out into the street and picked up the banner and, and rolled it up and, and put it back in his, his little cubicle before the police could come. And I don't think they even came. But before anyone found out what had really happened. But anyway, he told us about this, and it was quite an interesting thing because the, most of the banners were, were left alone, and some of them were erected right at the beachfront, and they were all over the city, about 30 of them. And, it, and they were put up by the devotees who didn't know anything about uh, erecting banners. They just got into this cherry picker thing and figured out how to do it, and, and it was pretty amazing. Then, uh, we thought, well, this is a pretty big event. We should get some kind of uh, major publicity for it. And then we gave this, this girl, her name was Vaikuntha, she was a disciple of Prabhupada, a, a big portfolio that was about a meter square with pictures of Rathayatra. And we asked her to, to get this on the, on the evening news. The evening news in those days was, uh, there were only three television networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC. And uh, so she, we gave her that assignment. And, and, uh, she, she really didn't know what she was doing, but we told her where, where to go. And uh, the first thing, and somehow or other, she managed to get into the, uh, the director's office in, in um, um, part of Los Angeles. We knew where it was. And the first thing he said to her is, how did you get in here? <laughs> and somehow or other, she used her feminine charms, we might call them, to get past all the guards and get into this office and talk to him about the Rathayatra. And he was convinced Although, you know, plane crashes and who's winning the football games and, 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 you know, what politicians are saying what about other politicians and stabbings and things like that, all take precedence on the evening news. But in, in spite of all that, he, he thought, well, this is something that's, that we should, we should report on. This is very good. And he arranged, while she was there, for this to be broadcast on the evening news, which started at 11 o'clock at night. Anyway, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So on the morning of the Rathayatra, the, the, uh, the, the Shamayanas were all erected and the tents were, were in place, but uh, we had to get clearance from the fire department. So the fire department sent an uh, emissary out to check all these Shamayanas if they're gonna be flame-proof because that was part of their job. Are they, are they actually flame-proof? So he, he lit a match to one, of the, the, uh, one corner of one of the Shamayanas and it started to, to, to uh, blaze up. And he thought, well, I can't, I, I, I can't let you have the festival with these inflammable things all over the place, but I don't want to stop this festival. So I tell you what I'll do. If you get a piece of, 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 of hose that's 200 feet long, and you, you connect it to this uh, tap, then I'll let you have the festival. So uh, this was like six o'clock in the morning and the festival started at about nine o'clock. So we had to find a place that was open where we could get that much hose. And somehow or other, we found a place and we bought that much hose and we hooked it up and he was still there and he said, okay, go ahead. I, but don't tell anybody what, I, what, what you did because technically what you're doing is completely illegal and against the fire department uh, uh, rules. So the, the Rathiata turned out to be a huge success, much more than we, we uh, had imagined. And, uh, what, what, was, what, what uh, caught the eyes of a lot of people, even more than the, the Rathayatra chariots, were the elephants, because they had all been painted. They had been painted in, in uh, psychedelic colors, and they all had riders on them. And, and they had their mahout, or their, their uh, director, their going along with them. And they were very intelligent, and they, they, the riders were dressed in, in very elaborate costumes. One was a lady, and two of them were men. And they, the men were dressed up like clowns. They, their faces were all painted. And uh, the elephants were very intelligent. And one man was, that uh, came along, he was, I don't know if he was a homeless person or what he was, kind of a grungy character. He was walking behind one of the elephants and, and kind of imitating them, mocking. 
And uh, the elephant kind of knew what was going on and, and he, he stuck out his rear leg and caught the man right in the stomach and the man just doubled over in pain. <laughs> it, it, I mean, I watched all this happen. It was just amazing. And then when the elephants got to this uh, uh, four acre uh, site, uh, we had elephant rides and they, we had a, a sort of a, like a, I don't know what they call them, like a purda or a thing that, that holds about six people in, in, on the elephant's back and they got to go for elephant rides around and around. You know, they had, there was a circle that they followed them around on. And so that's, the, the elephants were a big deal. Uh, and just a few days before the festival, the elephants were, were um, brought to the temple by their trainers and uh, they were so, so heavy that they, they, in the backyard of one of the houses, uh, he, the elephant put its foot down and the, the uh, the, the uh, turf just sunk like a, a red carpet into the ground. It just pulled down into the ground. They were that heavy. Anyway, that was, that was and the, the kids were just, just uh, amazed that the, anything that huge, they'd never seen anything like it. That was an elephant. Um, anyway, after that was a very successful festival. And uh, there were two things. There was a free feast, uh, and, and uh, there was a, a truck that kept the, the um, it was potato salad made with celery, and it was a very, uh, a very delectable potato salad. It was, there was a, it was humming out in front of the temple for about two days, keeping all the potato salad cold. So potato salad was served along with, uh, with uh, papadoms and a few other things, and, they were, and we fed a lot of people. And in addition to that, there were food booths that sold pakoras and, and uh, uh, um, other things, you know, for people to, to purchase if they had the, the necessary funds. Anyway, that was a, so there were about maybe seven or eight or maybe 20 different exhibits all over the, the, uh, the, the lawn area. Um, and, 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 and as a result of, of Vaikuntha's getting people to, uh, to put this on the news, uh, the, the, the uh, crew came out. I don't know if they were from Los Angeles or whatever. There was uh, the, the, uh, the, the moderator, the person who did the interviewing was named Karen Lovejoy, also known as Care. C-A-R-E, and love, joy. Anyway, she interviewed me, and then, uh, and I'll tell you all about the other people she interviewed later. Um, well, another thing that happened after, after, the, after a few rot theatres in Los Angeles, the, 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 the Park and Recreations Division decided to ban the festival. There was one of them, Rachel Martinez, who was very favorable, and her partner was Judy somebody or other. She wore a big cross, and we thought it was that she was one of these sort of born-again types that didn't like anything that wasn't Christian. So they had, there was these two people, and and the Santa Monica police, and the Los Angeles police, and a number of people that were city officials came to a meeting of about 20 people, and it was uh, in a well-appointed room, and... uh, and even though they protested very loudly, he said, the Judy said, well, what if they, someone throws a firecracker at one of the elephants? And he, he starts going wild and he kills st- uh, stampedes of people. That was the kind of arguments they were presenting. And the Santa Monica police said, well, it doesn't matter because these, this is one of the few times that, that uh, anything really good happens in Santa Monica and Los Angeles. And the Los Angeles police said, we know that, that it's it, an important good event because every night we see at least one person is murdered over drugs in, Los, in this Venice Beach area. And, and I think that we should go ahead with this festival. And they were the police, so they had final authority and the thing went ahead. And then uh, just fast forwarding ahead a little bit, after the, the, the Rathiatras in LA and after the ban was, was uh, told, we had to have a hearing with the uh, uh, people that, that were in, in charge of the, the city council of Los Angeles. There was about 15 people there Mostly they were housewives and, and housemen who didn't know anything about Rathiatra. Uh, one of them was a lawyer. And, uh, and we had to have this, this hearing to, uh, to, to find out, so that they could find out why we protested against the ban. And their own lawyer came to us and said at the halftime, she said, if they continue to argue against this festival, I'm quitting. That was their lawyer. She said she was going to quit representing them if they continued to argue against the festival. And one of the things that this lawyer was involved said, he said, well, if they wanted to, they could construct everything even in two hours. And we had just gotten through telling him it takes two days to put this thing together. And, and he said, well, if they wanted to, they could construct it in a few hours. So we won. And the city of Los Angeles had to pay $12,000, which was a lot of money, because they lost. And in, in ensuing years, they didn't even try 
to uh, stop the festival because they knew it would cost the, the taxpayers a lot of money. So uh, fast forwarding a little bit after the first Prathiatras, uh, the, the Mr. and Mrs. Kaur came to the funeral of Jayananda. Uh, it was a, a, it was, right, it was shortly after the, the Rath Yatra that, that, he, that, he, uh, that he inaugurated. And uh, they, they saw his body being lifted on a conveyor belt into a chamber that was, was fire. It was kind of a, a, of a cremation, you might say. It was in a graveyard, but they had a place where bodies were cremated. And uh, we could see that the parents were very, very uh, um, sort of, you know, uh, taken, uh, very grief-stricken, actually. And then we all went back to Rameshwar's room at the temple, and, and all of a sudden their, their, uh, um, their grief lifted, and they started to tell stories about what Jaina was like when he was a teenager, and, and the whole thing turned into a very joyous occasion. Anyway, back to the Ratha Yatra. The, the night of the Ratha Yatra, the news was uh, broadcast at 11 p.m., the evening news, and, and the presenter, I remember his name, was, was called Ed Bradley. And uh, it, was, it was a time when, when uh, the evening news was watched by upwards to six million people. And uh, somehow the, the, uh, we waited. I was in Rameshwar's room with Karandar and a few other people uh, of the BBT and waiting for it to see if it was going to happen. The whole news was about plane crashes and politicians condemning one another and football games and you know all, all sorts of atrocities. And then by 11.20, we saw this Ed Bradley sitting in front of what was a picture about three meters square of the, of the Jagannath Puri temple. And I don't know where he got that picture or where the, the, the news station got it, but it was a beautiful in-focus picture of the, of the Jagannath Puri temple. And then the, the whole thing cut to Los Angeles and we saw Karen Lovejoy interviewing all these people. And then uh, out of all the people that she was interviewing, she came across Mr. and Mrs. James Corr. And this became part of the news. She said, well, where are you from? And we said, uh, they said, well, we're from Grand Junction, Colorado. Grand Junction, Colorado, that's a long ways from here. That's uh, about 17 kilometers or, uh, uh, what is it, 170 kilometers. It's, it's a long ways away. And, uh, uh, and, and said, well, why did you come here all the way from Grand Junction, Colorado to, to Los Angeles? And, they, and she, the mother told them that, well, our son designed these chariots and, uh, and then he died about three months ago and we wanted to see what it was all about. And that became what was happening on the news. And all the people that were watching this, watching on a big screen, saw this in, 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 in Ramesh. We didn't know anything about the fact that she had encountered these people. And all, everyone who was watching, their eyes almost turned to rivers. And they saw Mr. and Mrs. James Corr glorifying their saintly son, Jayananda Prabhu. That was the end of the, of the night. So that's what I, any, any, uh, comments or further questions. And there's a book written about Jayananda that if you, if you want uh, to, to, to find out more, you can. But those are the highlights of his life. Uh, he was so well loved in San Francisco when he went down to the fruit market to get donations that, that uh, they knew him, they knew his name. They knew him as Johnny Ananda. And uh, he, used to get, he used to get bananas from a guy that he called Banana King Louie. So that's what happened. That's that's Jayananda's story. So any any uh, questions or comments about anything that I've said or anything about Jayananda's life? I I, I wanted to say this today because that uh, Prabhupada said that we should put his picture in the Rathiyatra carts and and honor him just as we honor other disappearance days of great acharyas. And he was a very much an American. Guy, I mean, we call these people from Ohio Hoosiers. In 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 America, they call them Hoosiers. They were kind of like dumb and innocent and s stupid people. But he wasn't one of those people. He just uh, he wasn't driving a ca taxi cab because he was stupid. He just didn't like the corporate world. And he had many interesting job offers. But he he was a taxi driver. And when he came to the temple as a taxi driver, when he was 30 years old, everyone else was in their early 20s or younger. And we thought this guy is really straight. And, uh, and it's a, really a feather in our cap that a 30-year-old is joining the temple. <laughs> anyway, that, that was when he, he first joined. And, and he stayed and never left, Hare Krishna. Yes. Emma, this is for you. 
Yes. Is there one small thing that we could all take from Jonah that we could learn that we can find into our own lives? Well, there's a lot written about Jayananda. He was a very humble person, and he, he was very attached to Prashadam, and he was very, uh, very uh, friendly to all devotees, and he considered them very, very... Uh, so we can learn from him some of those things, especially about his humility and his uh, frugality and many of the things that he personified, that, uh, that Prabhupada really um, glorified him. He was, he was chanting his glories on many occasions. So there are many things to learn, especially about the humility and frugality and friendliness and attachment to Prashadu. <laughs> yes, any others? Any more? Yeah, I've read um, these books a few times and there's uh, some really beautiful stories from all the devotees from around the world, just little short snippets. And, um, one which truly shines through is the, the love that he had for Prabhupada. Um, that there's times where he mentioned that he wanted to leave his body before Prabhupada because he couldn't bear the thought of leaving his spiritual master before he left the planet. There's also another beautiful story when um, Jaman the Tuckle was in the hospital. He was really, really sick. And the devotee went, one of his godbrothers went to see him. And um, he, he sat on his bed and he said, Oh, can you please not sit on the bed? He was actually sitting beside the bed. And uh, he, he, had a, he had a picture of Shura Prabhupada in the bed, a framed picture of Shura Prabhupada, and he was actually on the, on, on the chair beside the bed. He wanted his spiritual master to a more comfortable position in his room. So that's one of his, uh, his uh, best qualities, that's his, his uh, devotion to his spiritual master and his love to his spiritual master. It was uh, really beautiful and something which we can all yeah. Thank you. I guess we could speak for hours on end and maybe years and months and lifetimes, but those are highlights anyway. I tried to touch on them. One of the things he, I remember him saying was that, that uh, I, I sort of partnered with this guy named Brabuberhan, who I didn't know, this New York guy. And uh, Jayananda was, he initiated this festival. He was the one, he was the sort of like brains behind the whole thing. He got the wood and he, he uh, engineered the building of the carts. And at the end of each day, Baruhan would and I would go into his room and, and report on the day's activities. And he would say to us, so I don't know how you guys do it. I, I, it's, I, it's just amazing. I don't know how you guys do it. And he, he was actually doing everything. We were just like junk of flunkies. We didn't know what we were doing. But anyway, that's, that's, that was uh, an example of his humility. He was, even though he had masterminded the whole thing, he thought that other people should get credit for doing it. So, so anyway, there, there's, there's many other stories, nice stories, but those are the highlights. <laughs>